Okay, so we're back for round two. And um, we're on the draw again, and this hand seems perfectly fine. We've got anticipate on turn two, intercept on three. We've got a really good curve, um, and we should get a land drop with anticipate as well. Right, this sort of deck's always going to look really solid. Um, it's just how we play it's going to make the difference. We're just going to pass end of turn here. Then we'll anticipate in their end step. No intention of doing anything in combat. Front team I saw, nice, nice card. Snap taking with realised here. The card's just too good for us not to take. It does slightly affect how we want to play this turn. Um don't really want to be trading off the interceptor, but keeping the right to being is going to be better for us. Again, we've still got a nice curve, sort of turn four, turn five. The good thing is we can make the two four next turn. So we block the Mastodon here, block the Herald the turn after, and just sort of halt the assault and give ourselves time to sort of breathe. Wow, okay. Powerful wizard. Yeah, nothing we can do about that. Our opponent's getting up for some big damage here, but we can soon sort of bring it back. And we've got the Narset to follow up as well. We're going to go Student of Urge Tie first. Get some life gain on the go. Next turn, if we hit the land, we could play Mithrealized into Narset, which is just bonkers. Okay, so our opponent clearly has a trick here, um, but we can't really afford to take another five and possibly more. I think we just have to block the three two. It's probably going to bolster some uh, some amount. Yeah, press advantage, and he gets trampled as well. So he's still getting five. And we're really far behind this game. We seem to be coming against all of the beatdown decks. So we hit the land. Um, problem is, if we play Narset now, we almost certainly lose it. I think the correct play here is just play Mithrealize into right into being. And then not at next turn. So we play the elite scale guard face down. And we're just going to trade it anyway. Um, yeah, we'll play the elite. Uh, we'll play the right to being face down, and put the scale guard on top. That way, we get a big guy out next turn. So we chomp block this turn, big guy next turn. Our opponent probably still attacks. I know I would in their position.
Yep. Let's see if we can get blown out again. Quite happy to take two here. Yep, we get to trade. And they're going to follow with some sort of big threat, probably. Two four is fine. We can sort of deal with that. We're going to have our own big threat next turn anyway. So the elite scale guard becomes a four five, and we get to tap something every turn. So you basically just can't attack through this. He's probably going to try. Nope. Okay. This is perfect because it gives us the ideal opportunity now to resolve Narset. Or do we want to resolve a Dragon Bell Monk? Um, no, I think Narset's the correct play. We've got one mana white and blue spells. Um, I'm going to hold it white mana. Just as I was to activate them with three lives if we need to. Which is a two, which means we can at least trade with the Herald. Resolving Narsa just feels so powerful. And our opponent really isn't in a threatening position to try and deal with it. Okay, so we're never getting the land next turn, which puts us to six. Which means we're going to be able to add a count to my three eyes and cast Dragon Bell Monk. Or we can just hold up the enjoying victory. No need for us to attack here. Our opponent stands with one card in hand, which happens to be collected company. Wow, okay. Uh, put up to two creature cards, convert mana costs three or less. Sure. <coughs> so we want to send a block of four five, not it goes to one. to attack everything at Narset here I think or does it just come at me? Eh, if he comes at me he just wins right no not quite we have things that we can put in the way so we're going to trade off the Mithrealized here but that's not the end of the world Yep, he's coming at me with everything. He's got one card in hand. So we take this guy to one. We have to hold up enjoying victory. To deal with the Kieran. Wow, okay. We need something that deals with a flyer that costs two mana. That costs one mana. Dragon Lord's prerogative will reveal it. It's not going to help here. So do we just die? Pretty much. Yep, no point in seeing, letting them see any more of our hand. So we just got a little bit too far behind too quickly there. Again, I seem to bring in Cleric in quite a lot. Um, not seen any enchantments, so I'm not too worried about that. 
There's nothing else really that I want to sort of bring in. Um, if the cleric's coming in, we're probably going to drop here. I think we drop a right into being. We'll give this a go. I can see it's like completely bombing out in this draft, but the deck's been really good fun to play. Don't forget, if you want to see more of our draft videos, you can visit www.servicecast.com. You'll find we've got more Magic Online drafts on there. Um, we've also got some live drafts from our store of Modern Masters 2015 edition. And you'll also find some Pathfinder role-playing game podcasts articles and various other things going up on the site as well it's well worth checking it out we are still quite new so bear with us um there are box openings on there as well we uh, we cracked a box of modern masters 2015 yesterday that felt quite nice and of course don't forget if you are enjoying uh, the drafts that you've seen here hit the subscribe button Drop us a comment, let us know what you think. And if there's anything in particular that you do want to see, um, let us know and we'll do what we can to arrange it. I know we have got planned for the uh, for the near future to be getting a uh, an unhinged draft recorded for you, um, as well as a Modern Masters 2013 edition uh, draft and an Innistrad draft as well. So there's uh, there's quite a lot of good stuff on its way for you. Apparently it's taking a little bit more time to sideboard. Um, it seems some of the other matches are going really, really quickly. Everybody seems to be sort of two owing these these pods. But we're just gonna be happy to do what we can. Um we again almost didn't want to be on the play. This hand's a little bit awkward. Um we need to hit the blue source, we've got two sort of three mana plays, so we hit the blue for turn four. We're good to go, so we're going to keep it and give it a go. This is where we're going to get punished horrendously, but it's not a problem. Perfect, to get exactly what we needed here. I'm not going to reveal that we've got the blue source, I quite like our opponent to think we mana screw for a little while. Masters are not great. Um, we're almost certainly going to be blocking that with whatever our line of players. Maybe not, we'll see. We'll see what we draw. Arish and Cleric, perfect. I am more than happy to make that trade. Actually, I think we want to get the Dragonmail Monk out first. This is the potential next turn we can cast two spells and um, we draw something like Anticipate or Jeskai Sage and um, we can get the Cleric and the Sage out there. And we can afford to take one hit from this guy. Right, we can certainly make a race out of this. We've got the cards to do it. Looks like our opponent's missing their third land drop as well. Which I intercept is really great card for us to be seen. So it's an interesting question now as to what we want to play this turn. Um, <coughs> I think we want to play the interceptors face down. It seems correct. Not going to attack. Um, the Dragon Ball Monk's going to attack. The, uh, going to block the attack of Beast Breaker anyway. Uh, 
We'll take another hit for three. I'm not sure if we maybe just want to block here. Like we're not going to block here for a little while. And the Arishan Cleric can take care of that. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll deal with the Beast Breaker. And just hope we don't get blown out again. If we draw a land, we're almost certainly going to be dropping the Elite Scale Guard. He just blocks his board really efficiently. Yep, yeah, we're going to go for it. Not going to attack him in the morph. In fact, we can't attack him in the morph. Uh, it means he can't block. Let me take five on the way back. Uh, I'm going to wait a turn. Wait that one more turn and we can get the Arishan Cleric down. That seems like an ideal place for us to be. I quite happily trade uh, the Cleric and the Wandering Champion. It's just finding the right opportunity to cast it. Of course, if we draw the land, we've got the Sight on Sight and the Cleric that we can play. If not, then we can face down the Lawmaster. I expect our opponent's going to get quite aggressive here. Sure. Um, this indicates that he has something. Still quite happy just to take three. I'll take my beats here. Dagger to the Adam. Perfect. Something we definitely need to deal with because it's going to start taking counters off of our creatures. So let's have a look at what options we've got. This is actually going to be a 6-4 flyer. Um, it's going to race really efficiently. And we can still play the Cleric as well. It seems like a good line of play for us. Six four flyers gonna put a really tight clock on it. And I haven't seen anything in his deck that can sort of deal with it. Um it also means that we get to tap down his dagger to... And then we can play out the cleric. It means next turn we've still got sight beyond sight available to us. Uh, we've got the law master available to us. We've got a few different options that all seem quite good. So he's probably going to want to start moving counters here. He's certainly going to want to take counters off of this. He just moves the counter onto the Wandering Champion and then we get blown out. So we're actually going to try and do this. This just ensures that I don't end up getting blown out and having to face down a 4-2. Right, we can certainly deal with a 3-4 and our opponent may not realise that they can move counts from our from our creature to this.
the Senate having a good think about what the best option is. Oh, they're just going to bolster one of them, put a count on something again. Which means that we're going to get blown out anyway. Perfect. Nothing we can sort of do about that. Okay, so one, two, three. So we can side on side first. Well, no one why the deck we have got double blue. I'm going to take the stony road side here. And then cast a face down morph. <coughs> the scary thing is that he's now got this as a 5 5. Which means we have to double block this. So we double block here. Even if he moves a counter, that's fine. Uh, we chomp blocking here. We should be okay. This deck seems genuinely awful, but it is a lot of fun to play. seriously in trump block mode he just comes in with his team here No attack from the dagger tile. Okay. It's interesting. Um Alright. Guess we double block. just got everything that he needs. Two looks at cards to win the game. Let's see what we can get. So if we cast the Avon Surveyor we can bounce his wandering champion chump block Dagatar. Seems like the best plan here. The one man ashore being able to cast two creatures which is uh, a little bit rubbish, but there we go. We're just basically buying ourselves time at this point. You have no reason for him not to attack with everything. We have to chump block anyway, so we might as well chump block the dagger tar. What we really want to see is enduring victory. 
But even then we're still dead. Yeah, we just... I don't think there's anything out there that we can draw at this point. This does get us up to 7 life. <laughs> what a hand to see. Uh, we'll take Narset. Good game, bro. Okay, so thanks for watching. We'll be back shortly for round three.